Hello guys and welcome to our second episode in our blockchain series. In the previous one we have created successfully a wallet library uh, and a safe game that is storing our private key and we have initialized it inside uh, our character and indeed uh, know that we have a valid address that we can use. So we need more than just a short on-screen printout of our address to do something of substance with it. So what we're going to do next, we're going to build a very, very simple um, blockchain wallet that can be accessible through gameplay directly. So we're going to go into content, blockchain, and we're going to make a new folder. We're going to call it uh, UI or widgets. I prefer UI. Let's give it a color yellowish is the one I usually use and let's create a new use user uh, widget so widget blueprint of type user widget and <clears throat> just call it UI underscore uh, wallet widget maybe yeah just wallet widget it will be fine so just for start, this is absolutely empty. It doesn't even have uh, like the default uh, panel that you are probably used to because this is the new uh, way of how widgets work. But I have prepared something that I'm just going to paste here. And this entire project will be uh, able to download it. So you will have access to all of this that I have created. And it contains no logic whatsoever. All the logic is going to be created here on screen on the tutorial with you guys. So we got this and we can hmm, adjust some of the things like we don't need really a QR code and generation of QR code is a more complex task. Maybe we'll add it later. For now, we'll leave it like this. We'll leave all of those styles and all of those widgets. I want to show you how it's actually uh, looking in the game. But for this to work, we need to go back to our character and we need um, some button, let's say uh, tab. Mm, tap keyboard board tab so we can of course define it as an input for the project but i'm just doing it really fast uh, on press we want to flip uh, you know what we want to get player controller because all inputs are being called locally so i can just call a local player controller i can say um Mm, uh, mouse cursor uh, I can get mouse cursor show mouse cursor and I want to set mouse cursor <coughs> so I want what I want to do I want to just flip the state so oh not this one uh, not and uh, Let's add a star here, not boolean, on show mouse cursor and just say that's mouse cursor. Mm. <coughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm a little bit sick. So if I hit play now, I am in game, I don't see my mouse cursor, I, play t I hit tap, now I see my mouse cursor and my game mode is UI and game at the same time, but at least I now have a mouse cursor that I can uh, used to interact with things. Um, so we can do one more thing. Because we can read this value directly, we can go into our inputs. Where are the mouse inputs? This is the mouse inputs. And we can say, hey, if mouse cursor is showing, uh, then please don't do that. So if show Mars course is true, don't. If it's not, then do. And same will be here. Mm, this way we are we don't have to like disable inputs or do something tricky like input mode that is completely broken by the way. Uh, we're just adding or not adding oops uh, this if we can see the mouse cursor. So I go back now, hit play. Uh, and now I can't, I still can move, but I can't move the camera and this is exactly what I wanted. Okay. Uh, also, um, 
Do we want to reset the cursor position? We don't really care about that. Okay, let's let's move on. So we got this. And back, just had to change some um, editor settings that are unrelevant really here. Uh, okay, tab key. Uh, so this is uh, enter interface. Um, and I don't care about locking. Okay, so now we can interact with widgets. So on begin play, we want to do, of course, this. And we want to do a sequence because we want to uh, widget uh, create widget. So we want to create widget of type um, UI wallet widget, the one that we just created. We want to get player controller, which is the local player controller, and we want to just add to viewport. And we're not going to do anything about this appearing and disappearing from viewport. Um, <clears throat> so we, we just add it once and we don't bother with it further. We might want to also promote it to a variable and say wallet widget so we can access it more easily and maybe push some data to it. So yeah, let's disable this and enable this so it doesn't contain like this twice. Okay. <clears throat> so now if I hit play, I have this widget. If I hit tap, I can control my mouse and now I can click it and nothing happens if I click it, but it exists. So let's go to this widget and see how it's being constructed. So first of all, we got two main elements. We got the first the canvas panel, this is just the entire panel and it is just being put into the viewport. And then we have the open wallet, which is a button. And then we have the wallet, which is just a panel. And first of uh, all things, we need to say on clicked. So when this click, well, we want to go and see this wallet. How is it be called? It's just called wallet. Okay. So we want to get wallet. Uh, yes, this panel. I want to say that we want to toggle visibility. <clears throat> mm. So we want to get visibility based on let's get visibility. So we want to say is visible, right? And we want to do a select. So basically when we click it, if is visible is true, we want to collapse it. We don't want to like destroy it, hide it or anything. We just want to collapse it. So it's still there and it's still accessible. But if it is visible not, we want to make it visible. So now if I hit play, uh, I can show you that I click it and this happens, right? So it does nothing yet, uh, but we're going to code it in uh, in a second. Okay, so we got now this button that allows you to open the wallet. So let's actually start doing things with the wallet. So let's go here. Let's go to this button and this address. This address is called wallet address and is a variable. And it is just a text. So let's go here and let's say on construct. Uh, we can refer to the same function that we created in the library. So get wallet. Uh, wait, no, it was read wallet, wallet read, yeah, and we can uh, first check if wallet exists, and we can we need to use the same common name as we used previously. So let's create that and say wallet common name. Let's. Hmm. Let's maybe put all those into component category so it's easier to read well, uh, to read variables that are not components of the widget. OK, 
okay and now I can just close it and just have this okay so we've got common name common name is the same as we created in the character so just wallet and we can use it here twice so basically if wallet exists true then read wallet and if it is successful we can store the key here so wallet key and this is safe because widgets exist only on the local player they're never never replicated so storing even as a variable something as sensitive as the wallet key can be read from a remote uh, server or other client <coughs> so on construct we do this uh, and then we do a fail safe print strings saying wallet not initialized yet but this shouldn't happen because we're actually already creating the wallet first and then creating the widget so on the init of the widget the wallet already exists and here um, print string wallet load into widget failed okay so we got this we can now collapse those nodes and call it init wallet and we can even say with execution pins forward so if everything is successful we can keep on execution if we need to um, okay open wallet click uh, init widget okay so now when we're in it and we load this wallet we got the wallet key uh, what we want to do we want to get this key and you know what we can do it still here and we're doing the same thing as we did before so uh, public key we are generating the public key from the private key and if this is successful then we want to uh, generate address and if this is successful then we want to promote to variable and call it wallet address oh uh, eat wallet address as a string because we already got wallet address as a variable which is a widget and if everything is successful then go into output and error message is print string error message if this failed but it really shouldn't okay so when this happens we want to set for this text uh, the actual address that we are using so we can either do it through event and just set text or we can create a binding so let's create a binding and binding is running on tick if it is changing so what we want to do we want to just get it wallet address as a variable that's being set once so it's not regenerating the wallet address all the time and just convert it from a uh, string to text okay let's hit play and let's hit this and we have our address here yay so now you see that this address is on top of a button so let's do this button let's go to the button itself and let's say on clicked and on clicked what we want to do we want to get wallet address our eat wallet address variable and want to uh, set it to clipboard so basically we're doing control c of our address and by clicking this button we're going to do this and we're going to also print string address copied to clipboard and we're going to make it a nice color of let's say uh, I don't know like a cyan like this one okay Okay, copy address to clipboard and clipboard set is low entry extended standard library so it's part of the library that I initiated on the start of the project it's an absolutely free library that has a lot of really good utilities so now if I open a project 
browser and I open a new tab. <clears throat> I make it just empty, drag it here. If I go into my uh, MetaMask wallet, right? Um, so if I run this game now, and I go here and I copy this address, address copied to clipboard, okay? I can even close the game. I can go back to my MetaMask. I can say send and I can paste the address here. And it's saying the address is invalid. That's very interesting. Okay, for a second there, I was pretty worried about it, uh, but it's nothing really important. Uh, something that we're going to have to look uh, into uh, is the problem with the capitalization of the Ethereum address. So if you just put the address to lowercase, uh, it's, it becomes valid. So let's do the same here. So when you do uh, this set, we will first take this lower to lower and then just store it as wallet address. Okay. Uh, so we don't need to use this capitalization. We can just have everything set as lowercase. And now if I go here, uh, copy it, the 0x002 is, is valid. I thought it's maybe some problem, but not. If I go here and if I just say, you know, any network like Ethereum mainnet send, I just type it in. He understands that it is a valid address and you can send actual Ether to it. But we're not going to send Ether right now. We are going to send some monetary value to it after we are able to read the balance of the wallet.